Hello everybody, it's your old friends at Monday Madness and welcome to the latest exciting edition of Sierra Quest, live from the bunkers. <laughs> uh, quite appropriate this time actually because we've gone all like post-apocalyptic and alien veiny with Manhunter New York. Um, Jonathan Daniel joining you as ever. And uh, yeah, we've uh, this is a bit left field for Sierra. First of all, there's not a quest in the name, which is highly unusual for them at this hour. Um, and to be honest with you, um, I've got feelings about this game, Neil, as I mentioned to you beforehand. <laughs> um, Absolutely. I will share um, them as this show goes on. <laughs> yeah, um, I'd, I'd played this game, so I kind of left you to it. Yes. Um, because it's fucking terrible. <laughs> Yes, it is. Um, yes, it is. Your your periodic mental breakdown updates on Facebook mm. were just fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's pretty as well because like this is a pretty decent intro for 1988. You know. Yeah, absolutely. The art's it's... okay. The music's all right. If a little doing the the, doing the credit as graffiti there yeah. like that. Clever. Just a shame that everything else about it is wrong. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this will be no. This will be a cautionary tale. my ballers. <laughs> yeah. So the the story of this game is that Earth has been invaded by flying eyes. And um, the orbs. And the orbs. Yes. And uh, somehow, after all, after about two years in like uh, basically in submission to these floating like balls of vitriolic fu fluid, we're still somehow like subservient to them. Um, mm -hmm. Not only that, but a kind of a culture has developed where there are people that now work on the side of the orbs, and they're called manhunters. And the idea of it is that they're basically like, I think they're trying to go for Blade Runner vibes here, right? But not very sort well. of. They're hunting down like um, initially. What you're doing is is you're hunting down members of a resistance cell. Yes, um, exactly. Because the orbs have um, forbidden anybody from speaking or communicating at all. Mm -hmm. And I think they're all in, like, um, they've all got tracking devices. So there, there's that's yeah. the orb telling us what to do. Yeah, exactly. So we, as I a like how a floating orb still I see is a fucking lift. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. Maybe, I think that's just maybe trying to be, like, uh, I don't know, Man, like, look at light to us. That guy's actually he's got a, that's got a log at, like, the window that's, level. That's the same orb. Like, he's actually yeah. just, he's, he's just flown at that side. <laughs> Maybe that's maybe that's just a, that's like the orbs entrance where it can just kind of yeah. float in from that side and like the mm. the human entrance is like off camera. But as you can see, as Neil was saying, like basically because the orbs are in power, their way of like suppressing the human race is to get them all to wear Franciscan robes and have them uh, work with laptops that at this year two thousand two would be very out of date. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the, the the premise of the game is as Neil was saying, we are going to track like. Uh, Members of a resistance. We're off. The, we're off the, cell. Yeah, we're off to hit hunt people of a resistance cell. Yes. This, this actually, this is quite good graphically for. I mean, because it was 1988. Yeah, like the premise um, is really good, and the whole the gameplay of it is quite clever. But the the problem with it is the gameplay. <laughs> that's, the, that's the central issue, and I'll share it, a few it, stories that didn't make the edit. It um, is fucking terrible. Yeah, it is, and it's a shame because there is a good idea here. And it like works in places, and in all the others they don't. Um, but like I said, we'll get we'll get to that as the as the video goes on. Um, and as I said, like the whole idea is that you kind of like this is kind of like your briefing, if you like. So you're seeing where this where this person has gone, and then you're gonna retrace their steps and see what's going on. And in a way, like you're kind of picking up the story as it goes, where like things are happening after you get there, and with each kind of like day in this game you're getting closer and closer to what's happening but at that point you'll have decided to side with the rebels because uh that's the whole point of the game is to say okay fuck this orb nonsense i'm going to join the rebels even though mm -hmm. for an indeterminate amount of time i probably would have been killing rebels on behalf of the orbs but today is the final the final straw <laughs> we've, we've exactly it's your this. it's your it's your classic you know double cross exactly Double oh, here we are. This is this, mm. this is mad. Mad is the computer interface that we use to yep. yeah, sort exactly. of interact with people. Yes, and uh, <laughs> so at the moment we have three places to go, which will be the church, uh, the uh, the uh, the bar, the bar, 
and the Flatbush Bar. The Flatbush Bar, which is uh, an unfortunate name at that, um, <laughs> and of course the hospital where this all started. So, um, we kind of like it's. I suppose it's kind of like customary to kind of go where they've gone, basically, maybe perhaps in that order. But I was relying on the walkthrough for this, and I'll be honest, the, the walkthrough was responsible for some of my mis- mis- my shortcomings as well. It was not. Uh, <laughs> It was not well communicated, I'll be honest. Um, and believe me, and like, I, know, we <laughs> I know we've been using the uh, the walkthroughs to kind of speed these playthroughs up, but this is but walkthrough is fucking essential for this game because you have you won't have a clue what's going on otherwise. Yep. Also, another thing you'll probably notice is that there's no that's a save. Mm-hmm. Fury is saving. Yeah. You also notice that um, this game doesn't use a text uh, text parser. No, it's it does not. Rudimentary point and click. And Oops, that's the orbs. that's the first fault with the game because um obviously with the with the arrow interface it's doing what well, like most point and click most first person clickers will do then is like you'll have the arrows at the side or whatever it is to move. The issue with that is that it's not very consistent where like where the arrows are. So you'll always have to like point the arrow to the, towards you if you want to go back. But in some areas, back is like half the screen. And that's a real kicker because um, what's happened a lot of times is when I'm saving, right? You'll hit enter, but enter is also ooh, ooh, the uh, you use uh, for menus. So. Uh, is he dead? No. No, <laughs> he's just a host of two little baby orbs. I mean, you'll also you'll also notice as well that Sierra have made somewhat of a detraction from their usual family friendly. <laughs> um, yeah, this is where they've, this is where they've gone gritty, gritty and real. Yeah. Incidentally, yeah, this is the I think it's the first Sierra game that's not written by either Williams. No, this is done by the uh, I think it was the we saw it we saw it on the credits there. It was all like from like Barry's know, the Barry Barry's, yeah. Yeah. Barry Hunters and the Barry and one of the sisters did the graphics. Mm-hmm. I think it was so, yeah. Uh, I was actually fishing for a death there, but it, it took too long. Um, <laughs> basically, that death I was aware of, where like if you stay stare at the like the like, basically the orbs nest for so long, they just fly at you and eat your face, which is uh, you know unfortunate at best. So we've got the toe tag off your man there and search for him, and turns out he was a manhunter. So yeah, we've been uh, one of our colleagues has been exterminated and. We're supposed to feel really bad about that. So this is me getting used to the controls, and what I'm learning <laughs> is that the clicking is uh, sensitive, which uh, comes into play several times during this playthrough. I love as well that the uh, the security robot is <laughs> basically a like a pr- is proud standing with like a massive like metal phallic phallic right, <laughs> right between the legs. Like, I mean, it doesn't kind of. Uh, Ensure security. I don't know what is. So um, yeah, there's nothing to do about this hospital, but I again, I, I kind of like t- the orbs fl- floating around the screen. It's it's neat. Like it, there's there's some good things about this game, but god damn it, it goes south fairly quickly. This is me trying to figure out how to travel. And there we go. So yeah, that's the whole point of the game is basically going around New York and. Uh, Going to all the locations we've been made aware of. And of course, if you're lacking locations, just follow the tracker again and see where he went. Oh, also, we should point, kind of point out that like this is point and click, but there is no mouse um, support. Yes, exactly. So you're using arrow keys to move the pointer. Mm-hmm. That's true, actually, as well, because, well, you know, in fairness with the mouse, uh, I think it's because I was working off scum. Um, Scum VM that is. Um, no, no, there is, there is no mouse support. There no, never has been. No, there hasn't been. But uh, Scum <laughs> VM kind of approximates mouse support um, when you're playing it. But uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's an approximation. <laughs> so, um, so we don't know the, we don't know the, we don't know what the crack with the uh, church is just yet. We know they went in there, but we don't know why. So uh, we'll kind of leave that for the minute. And then I think our next protocol is the bar, which is hmm. somehow the point where the game gets worse. <laughs> and I can't believe it because we're, as the video says, 10 minutes into the game. <laughs> Jesus. Really bad. Um, Fury is saving. Mm. 
I, if anything, it's not furious. It's just necessary. Necessary saving. Um. So as you can see, this is one of the uh, human bars where well, it looks like a it looks like a scene from fucking uh, Discworld or something like that with all the robed and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just waiting for Rob Brydon to do a narration of something. Wondering. Ah, you decided to play ha halls, walls, balls, and dolls. Well, I tried to, but I got whisked away, as you'll see here. <laughs> they don't like our kind around here. We don't know what the problem here is, but they just decided to take a take umbridge with us. And now they're doing a conga line. Oh, yeah, yeah you're gonna. We're doing that. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna throw knives at your hand now. Yes, and that's our first uh, bit of gameplay. Yep. Because we're now gonna return the favor. So the the knife is apparently too far away from the finger to count, so we just get thrown out. <laughs> with a very whimsical uh, music to go with it. <laughs> Still though, we interfered with an orb, so you know, wasn't all that bad. This whole sequence seems somewhat out of kilter with the oppressive atmosphere that the game is very clearly trying to uh y Yeah, right? Like we've just got Oh you oh, got his finger oh, nice. <laughs> happy with that and uh yeah this is our first death scene lads and it's a good one there's our character oh you went full mount mountain on the viper on you yeah <laughs> yeah uh so uh george r r martin uh, i think someone from uh the barry brothers is going to sue you very very soon and that's the game over screen, by the way, is the Williams and whoever the other prick is staring at you going, ha, ha, Hi, it's the dev you're... team slagging you off. It's just them going, ha ha, you're really shit at this, you know? Has they never told you that? That you're really bad at video games? <laughs> it's a good thing we're not bad at video games. Yeah, good thing we're not bad at making them. <laughs> oh, think you fucked it. Oh, yeah. Yes. So thankfully, we, thankfully, they were thoughtful in some areas where you could just skip the deaths. Just get on with the, the whole humiliation. <laughs> get on with knifing a guy in the fingers as he crushes your head time and time again. Yeah. Unfortunately, they don't have that um, same compassion uh, for the rest of the game. Maybe this is their like, freebie or something. <laughs> Way too far away. <laughs> Apparently so. That's miles, man. Miles away. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see an offside flag. L level is on, lads. Come on. Nailed it. Nailed it. Oh, yeah, got it, I think. Nice. And now the unit is our friend, and he will allow us to play a video game in his presence. And look, all the other frat boys in the corner are just delighted themselves. They're going to start singing uh, fucking Oasis now, just to really lighten the mood. Now you're going to run away, because the guy has a knife. <laughs> no, they run away from us, apparently. What a misunderstanding that was. <laughs> Alright. So, Neo, um... What's your opinion on uh, mazes in video games? Well, this one in particular is quite bad because you can't touch the walls. Indeed. You can't. Um, or you're going to die. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of bollocks. It is a lot of bollocks, but it's somehow like a double stack of bollocks, as we'll find out in a couple of minutes. Uh, this, this game has a lot more relevance than it deserves, unfortunately. Um... I think the worst thing about it is that like your your character like shape and di and like walk speed is just ever so slightly different when it's like lengthways and like sideways. <laughs> so it's very hard to judge corners, you know. Um there's one corner in particular that's just a, that I just keep like bouncing off because it's just so hard to judge. Um, I think it's shite. 
<laughs> uh -huh. That's entirely possible as well because uh, this game was not kind to me at all. Uh, like, I I'm not even joking here when I say this could be the worst game I've played as part of this series. And that's, that's including... <laughs> That's including the game that we had to debug to complete. And yeah. I also admit that, like, we have actually said that several times in the series, but somehow they keep, like, topping it. I don't know how, but they keep topping it. So, yes, you're absolutely right in, when you... If you're coming to the conclusion like that we all are, yes, you do have to hit all those 12 balls so you can get to the end. <laughs> There's also fun points where the uh, arrow button just ignores you and they decide uh, <laughs> it just decides to just walk you into a wall um, in fact there's a serious lag with the control sometimes where the game has decided no you're dying here there's actually nothing you can do about it and you could be there like, just like smacking the fucking left button going no dodge your cut and no the game has already kicked into its uh, death animation by the time you pressed it mm. so Pretty much, um, one of the things as well, um, I found as well, this, like, the, the puzzles in this, um, deviate from other Sierra games mm. because they're incredibly fucking linear. Like, yeah, they're sickeningly, like, they're really, really bad, mm. um, puzzle construction, which is quite bad because the atmosphere, I think the one thing this game does have going for it is that it does almost in spite of itself, have a, a quite a good sort of atmosphere. Like, it's a dark and brooding atmosphere. Hmm. Um, that's quite well done. And the story... This, oh, for fuck's sake, man. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> the, story, the story does actually seem like it's quite good. Um, and you do get some really gory visuals as well. Yeah, like, in a weird way, like, it kind of feels like the this was kind of meant to be... You know, those kind of, like, those visual text adventures? You know, like... Uh, Hitchhiker, like something like Hitchhiker's Guide, if, if you like, where you do have like, like the actual like the backdrops and the art in it is really really good, and then if you had a text interface, you just go from like place to place and just like look at all the groovy graphics, and then you realize like halfway through, oh shit, we have to be like we have to make a game out of this. Oh yeah, I knew we were forgetting something, and this is kind of what we got. Um, I think it's yeah, because like, there's lots. Of there's lots of good elements in here that I would kill for in other um, Sierra games. So, yeah. like, the, the device and the travel map, they're quite easy to access. So moving about the city is very easy. Yeah. Um, because they're using an overhead map, there's no real... There's no kind of red herrings because mm. every location has to have... has to be relevant. Yeah, exactly. So there's no, there, there's no loads of areas like in previous Sierra games where you're just it's just there to waste your fucking time yeah exactly uh because you couldn't do that with the entire island of manhattan you, like you'd literally have created a game that people could just wander around for years on end and get nowhere exactly and you yeah. wouldn't have the memory you wouldn't have the memory to do it anyway mm. particularly not back in 1988 <clears throat> this is the thing um, like, it, like if the game is a is like when you do kind of boil it down it's a really really short game um like like I said, like our like video cut is like what two and a half hours. But if I was like very strict at the editing, I could boil it down to like another hour and a half, you know, because it's just it's the actual the whatever kind of arcade segments they have in are just really poorly made, and that's the real main criticism of the game is that just the the actual action set pieces they have in it are just so bad to play. Um, yeah, they're terrible. Uh, you can actually almost, you can, but one of the things they seem to kind of have realized this, mm. and rather than um, like make the just make the sections fuck it, oh, oh, you're freaking out there. Uh, yeah, uh, you, can, uh, you can't uh, stop yeah. once you keep once you start moving. Oh yeah, yeah, it's perpetual motion type of thing. Um, oh sorry, yeah, the arcade sequences mm. is that the game designers seem to have realized how bad they are, and you can actually save in the middle of them. You can yes. you can save throughout them. Which is really, um, really useful. Because <laughs> it's actually, actually, it, when you, I think when, when the video gets to the arcade sections, you'll see that it's not just useful, it's fucking necessary. Very necessary. Because, uh, oh man, um, because there's not a whole lot of them. I don't think there's a single one of them you could complete first time. I would, I, I'd say you would, but you have to have like artistic levels of timing. 
especially in the segment I'm thinking of where like uh, it's not necessarily the fact that you you can get the timing down like after a while but do you really have the time to do that is there not another a better thing that you could be doing like is uh, are you talking about the section up to the the window the, yes. the yeah 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 now yeah i will applaud anyone who spends enough time and energy getting that down to a first attempt but to those people i would say you could have wrote a book in that time you could have yeah. learned to play the violin you could have done something useful <laughs> you, you could have made a cure for cancer in that time but instead you decided to play manhunter and get the gameplay down right and that is more about you than me quite honestly um i'm happy to breeze through this game bluffing my way through because i have better things to be doing with my time um, <laughs> and i do this essentially as some form of like vitriol management for myself and neil where like this is <laughs> this is essentially counseling for us we're able to play a bad game get really angry over it and we get on with the rest of our lives you know um, yeah but this, this is really terrible also the i don't think any of the arcade sections have any kind of real uh bearing on what it is you're actually meant to be fucking doing like they've no mm. like, like this section like you have to do this yeah and like you're not you're not just dicking around here you have to do this and it's like what the fuck has this got to do with man hunting mm. here's the thing though like this this section here is relevant to two puzzles coming up and there's absolutely no way of knowing that starting off <laughs> there's no way of knowing this and yeah, if you just if you're just like a normal person and thought, oh, an arcade game is just a bit of a side game to flesh out the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I, this has got nothing to do, but it's like, not no, you actually do have to do this. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but like completing it is like, well, obviously completing it means you get a location of the map, right? So that's one. And then the puzzle right after this is like mirrors this, and then the puzzle after that also mirrors this. So you somehow have to have maybe because because you're gonna play this for so long, you're gonna have a neurotic knowledge of this game of this arcade segment. But again, I think at that point you would perhaps have injected bleach into your bloodstream to uh, to ease the pain. Um, <laughs> uh, I was mentioned there that there's a section of the map of the maze that's like really hard to judge, and that's it there. Um, I think I may have cut out a couple of minutes of failure in that one. Uh, you know, because it's those corners are like really, really bad. Um, but yeah, it's a. It's not a. It wasn't a good start to the game. Like the momentum I picked up in the first ten minutes just just went out the window here, <laughs> and I re I slowly came to the realization of okay, this is the game we're playing. This is it. See that that corner is like that is so bad because <laughs> i've clearly cleared it there but it just doesn't allow it there's just a massive square around that corner this is your uh your, your own personal senna chicane here oh <laughs> i think it's more of a it's more of a singapore sling at this stage lad uh or uh, <laughs> the last corner in canada where like you can clearly make that corner but no 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 you have to you have to take the curb or else you're Going straight into the fucking lake. Um, oh, that's really bad. There we go. See, that's what fucks me up, is that the walking speed is, like, different from when you're going up the screen as opposed to going across the screen. Yeah. And, yes, thank fuck, I do actually take a save here. <laughs> I only did this yesterday, but still, my mem my mind has actually blocked it out now. It's that it's been that bad. <laughs> yeah. But yes, finally, this uh, awful part of the game is over. I'm soon to be replaced with an even more awful part of the game. This is somehow only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, so that's actually one of the better arcade sections of the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to pick out a best one, Neil, in fairness. Yeah. And here's oh. your congratulations. You won! Yay! Indeed. So, yeah, we didn't actually Kill get me. a prize out of that. Um, our prize was that uh, Coney Island exists, and now we're aware of it. That's That was the prize of it. <laughs> and I couldn't... F I couldn't free travel. 
<laughs> so I had to start playing the game so I could stop playing it. And now I can go to Coney Island and see what's that what's out there. Except I can't for some reason go to Coney Island. This is the this is the problem. Um the last location that uh, our target went to was some toilets in Central Park. Or, not in Central Park, uh, outside Central Park. And that's where we're going to go next. Prospect Park. Prospect Park, there we go. Sorry. Look, sorry, look. sorry to any uh, New Yorkians there for uh, getting your park <laughs> wrong. Um, I'm sure I'm sure it's at least your concerns right now, but uh, it's... Uh, so, as you notice on the map, it was the toilets on the left. And the last one on the right. So, let's see what he did. These toilets have seen better days. Hmm. You notice there's a peace sign there. Oh, yeah, you're going to take a dump. This is a uh, standard attire, by the way, when we're taking over by the <laughs> uh, Our only way of rebelling against the system is having novelty socks. Again, if anybody thinks that, like... This dark and foreboding and brooding atmosphere is somewhat at odds with this as we're snaking down a tube like fucking Metroid. <laughs> with the really jitsy music, because it's like, you're yeah. going down a toilet, you're going down a toilet, joining... And it's resistance. incidentally actually one of the better pieces of music in the fucking game. The music's good. It's probably the better music out of, out of Sierra Quest so far. Um, you know, at least it's catchy, is what I'd say. <laughs> um, so now we're in our second phase of the game. Um, but not really. This maze is an exact copy of the game we've just been playing. And the whole point of the get of this is uh, we have to pick up 12 key cards in this maze. And they're all <laughs> in the same positions as they were in the video game. So not only yeah, do you the, have to the... remember the map, but you also remember where the key cards are and then get to the end so you can get to Coney Island. Exactly. So, if you'd not drawn out the map from the previous game, which there was absolutely no way you would have, precisely, uh, because you could see it. Um, yeah, yeah, you're you're up a certain creek without a certain fucking paddle here, Pi. Yeah, you're you're swimming up fucking Ribena, Ribena Creek here without a paddle. Apparently, everyone's uh, sewage turns purple under this new age. Yeah, what the fuck is that black shit all around the fucking caves? <laughs> It's oil. <laughs> the the sewage is apparently so bad it's made the oil travel up the walls. And solidify into a cavern. Yes, exactly. Because we're Sierra and we don't know what contrast is. So the problem with this area is, and obviously there's several <laughs> problems with this area, but the main problem is that you kind of have to do it all in one sitting or else you will get lost. Because all the caverns and, like, areas look exactly the same, part the ones with key cards floating in it, you know, you kind of have to, like, be able to look at the map at the same time and then move around. And if you lose track or save once, like I did here, you just lose your bearings completely, especially in the middle of it. Okay, I would have caught it, caught, caught out a good bit of it, but I think I was a good 20, 25 minutes in this maze. Yeah, you would be, even with, like, a fucking walkthrough or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. And there is, like, a part of, the, part of your brain that's going, you're never going to get out of here. Like, just, <laughs> just reload. Like, you, you, you've already lost. <laughs> um, and, of course, you might be thinking, oh, well, oh, well, Jonathan, you might, these 12 key cards must be important. Surely we're going to need them in Cody Island. No, we're not. No, this is this is for later on in the game. So you'd have to go, go and do these sewers anyway, if you needed to. So have you got any topics that to bring up what, during this maze time, Neil? Because I've got nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just about this game. It's just so terrible right um i wouldn't even mind but they have some really really good ingredients it's a decent enough story the setting is quite cool and anything with murder mystery i mean it's quite difficult to fuck up 
Yeah. And wow, they really, they didn't just manage to fuck it up, but they managed to create an even worse game than a lot of the previous Sierra Quest games. Yeah. Yeah, this is the thing. Um, remarkably, though, this got a sequel. Um, the sequel yeah, there is a sequel to this. <laughs> yeah, Manhunter, Manhunter San Francisco. And uh, considering that that's the only one, I presume uh, <laughs> it must have been of the same quality as this one. But we, it's on our list, so we will get to it eventually, if we can find it. Um, you can tell that Sierra is really proud of this game, because this is actually Abandonware. You can't buy this anywhere. <laughs> it's also not illegal to turn it down. No. Uh, this is what Sierra would call a bad debt. <laughs> <laughs> your <laughs> debt policy is, you're more, more than welcome to play it, but you don't really don't have to. Like, we have Gabriel <laughs> Knight right here. <laughs> Please play that. <laughs> Please play that instead. <laughs> but just play Gabriel Light. Like, <laughs> just for your own benefit, really. Yeah, you remember that middle section of the ma of the uh, game slash maze where like it kind of snakes around in like a whole lot of corners. That's where you're going to get lost because you have to kind of keep track of where you are in relation to the maze, and uh, that's kind of what happens to me here. But uh, like I said, I I blanked out a lot from that uh, from that experience. It's fair to say. <laughs> and like I said, if you do take one wrong turn, you're pretty much going around in circles then, and there's no way of knowing like where you are in relation to the map. And the bad thing is, like, there's not even anything that can kill you in this maze. You just get stuck in it forever. That's the difference. This is how they've inflated game time, is both making this impossible. Do you go to the Coney Island? There's a stall that I went to when I was first playing this. Mm. Did you get the orb and the stick? Yeah, yeah, actually. Oh, uh, you did. That, that was my next uh, irritating story of this game. <laughs> oh, you, you, you go, you go to that after this. I went to this yeah. before. I did that before this. Um, before this maze, I remember actually. I did sketch this out when I was playing this game. I think my my dad had a graph paper, which yeah. made it super fucking easy. Mm. Uh, to sketch it out, but yeah. Those are the days, eh? <laughs> like, I, I know I come from a slightly different generation from you, but the only game that's made me write down things was Loom. And I, I, I hold it in high regard for that reason. Guys are Jesus fun. Christ. <laughs> How many of these have you gotten so far? Uh, nine, I think, or ten. Like, oh, sure I think I you're almost out now. Yeah, I am, I think. But, uh, yeah, this is suffering. And don't let anyone else do it away. So there oh, we there we go. So, again, that was the successful attempt. Now, imagine me playing this initially, getting six cards then taking a wrong turn and then going around in circles for 10 minutes <clears throat> Try, like just trying to find yourself in the map if you're off the beaten track you're just screwed so yes you'll need those key cards for later on um for and like and it's much later on as well like it's yeah. quite a pretty like much it, in the second it, half of the game yeah and uh what, there's coney island in the distance Mm-hmm. Stand by to drop. Yep. And that's where that's this is where we ended up. Such happy music. <laughs> Such happy looping music. Happy looping music. So 
So yes, it's these, it's one of the games that we need here, and um, that's important to us. Oh man! <laughs> well, that's don't ever step up. Don't ever step up to the Yaki by. <laughs> <laughs> I think our uh, Bob's Eye video has uh, well and truly proven that. <laughs> um, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there's only one game that's relevant here, and that's the QB doll one, because obviously the uh, arcade machine uh, has that down pat. But there's a reason for it as well, right? Now, this is according to the walkthrough, and I don't fucking believe it, but in order to join the resistance, right, you have to knock down the last three QB dolls that's in the arcade machine, right? And you have to do it in the right order. So whatever one was last to be knocked out is the first one you knock out. And then the second and third one. And then if you get it right, then the uh, the fucking hooded figure there um, will basically look at you suspiciously. And that's your opportunity to uh, to show your medallion you just picked up. Because that's a medallion of the resistance. And then you get uh, onto that path. Do you have to knock them down in order? Or do you just have yeah. to knock down three without missing? No, you do. You, you, you do have to knock them down in order. Because... Uh, that's where I was fucking up initially in my playthrough was that uh, I was knocking them down I knocked them down the first time exactly right like I did here right so this yeah. is where you're supposed to offer him the medallion but if you're too late um, like I am here right so you only you get a certain amount of time and then <laughs> these smug cunts go hmm, I wonder what that was all about and then you get your prize so then when I was playing that initially, right, I tried to record oh I was thinking like, that's okay. Such a nudge, that's such a nudge, nudge, wink, wink from the fucking developers. <laughs> and the big this object has no use. Uh. Oh, holy shit, man. You ain't ever getting into no resistance. Uh, <laughs> this is, if this is the uh, uh, test I failed. Oh, fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> Is I keep finding that first doll. But see, here's the thing, though, right? Um, on my subsequent attempts to try and get him, like, to uh, give me the the medallion, right? I had... This was happening, okay? So I wasn't getting the prompt in order to the, uh, to show him the medallion. I was just getting this fucking rapey face all the time. So I then thought to myself, have I soft blocked myself because I missed my first chance? You know, obviously, that's not the case. But because I convinced myself it's a Sierra game, they're known for this <laughs> shit. Um, I just had to keep trying and trying, and yeah, it wouldn't come around again. So I was thinking like, oh god, do I have to do that maze again? <laughs> um, but thankfully, uh, I soon realised that's not the problem. Uh, you do have to put the do the dolls in order, and then you get the uh, you're able to join the resistance. As you see here. Well, as you would have seen there. <laughs> Take two, action. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the ball slipped there, all right? The ball just slipped, okay? Shut up, Bill. Yeah, I think it was at this point where I was deciding, yeah, yeah, I think I am soft locked here. <laughs> <laughs> why, did, why draw such a weird character, Sprite? Like, I don't know. Don't, 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 this, I don't understand it. This game has a weird thing with faces in this, you know? Like, because. Like, surely, surely drawing a normal human face and character model would have been more. would have been less difficult than that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Here's, this is the thing, like. Because, for the most part, like, okay, we're, like, two years under the thumb of, like, some floating eyes. Cool. I don't think we turn weird that quickly. And there we go. Oh, jeez, that's lovely. Like, say what you will, okay, maybe we have to stay indoors a little bit for the for this uh, pandemic. But we're all... I'm like, you're human. Yeah, exactly. We look fine. It's these guys that are weird. Like, if this is the resistance, I want no part in it. Yeah, here's a puzzle that's important. Phil is trouble. He's a double. He's an eye. 
That's no lie. That's a reference to what will be the nemesis of this game. A guy called Phil. 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 <laughs> In all fairness, they usually are the nemesis to everything. Yeah, exactly. Name me an evil Phil, lads. All of them. Yeah. Exactly. So then... Um, John Cena. <laughs> you can enter any name you want in this. Uh, <laughs> uh, into that as a suspect. And they presumably get ex- it get uh, executed. So every edgelord uh, WWE fan is now thanking me because I just ex- executed John Cena. Yeah, but you can't see him. Ah, Even see. a giant... Even John giant floating, can't see him. <laughs> even giant floating eyes just can't see him. Yep. Although, in all fairness, you can just hear him just wait around for a bit, and there's only here. <laughs> and that was day one, yeah. That's day one. That is a quarter of the game done, lads. Um, and what a quarter that was. What a what a rip roaring affair that all was. Oh, here comes the eyeball back to trade your space. Here comes our lab- labor lottery uh, advisor. I am going to wobble at you. Glory to our Stutzka. <coughs> Wait a minute, we're the Manhunter. Why are we going after a fucking maintenance spot that's gone tonto? Well, I think it's uh, believed that the uh, rebels have commandeered it for their own personal use. Mm-hmm. What do you think the name of our orb friend is? I would say stick me. <laughs> he looks like a Dave. But a lot of orbs look like a Dave. Like even for <laughs> even for like creepy scary aliens, like they're all a Dave is always going to be a name, you know. <laughs> So this is the fun part of tracking. We've got three targets to, to look for now. Are oh, there the three targets you have to track down yet? Yeah? Yes. So you're gonna have, you're gonna be basically be doing this three times. So you gotta track target A, then B, and then C, and see where they all all go, and then uh, pretty much just fucking follow them is all you're doing. But there is like a a natural like path if you will of what to do but uh i, I, I think I, one winds up in a one winds up in a fucking in the museum isn't it the, the history museum yeah which is where they've gone now uh and then this guy here goes into the uh this deli here and yeah and as you can see there's something else on the map. Ooh. Mm, something very, very unusual. Blip, blip. It's like he's kind of been like half tracked. Quite sinister. He's like a screensaver gone wrong. <laughs> and he seems to be ta- it seems to be taking their target with them. Is that the smell of intrigue? Nope. That's just me having a nice whopper fart. <laughs> ah, they're going for a nice walk in the Central Park. They are indeed. And we'll get to Central Park because I have feelings on that area of the game. Central Park's a lot more purple than I remember it. <laughs> it's all the pollution. <laughs> I mean, maybe may, I, I get the feeling that the art director was just a huge fan of Prince, and just took it too far. <laughs> yeah, actually, to be honest with you, if all of this purple is an incidental tribute to Prince, then I am actually all I, for it. Sure, like, and I will immediately, I will immediately retract every negative thing I will ever say about this. <laughs> to be fair, like the one thing about Prince was that he was always scared of floating eyes. It was always his one and only fear, and the fact this game has paid tribute to that, I think, has to be commended. Also, incidentally, if you're playing this without a walkthrough, you do have to be noting where it is that they're going. Yeah, exactly. You, you, like you, you need like this is one of the games where you need a pen and a piece of paper, and you should be really be writing out where they're actually going. Um, if the maze section hasn't taught, hasn't hammered out right into your frontal lobe by this point. Yeah, 
especially in the park <laughs> section because uh, left, right, and up uh, all mean different things in the park. <laughs> and there's no, they don't have a very uh, subtle way of uh, of differentiating it. So you could be in the park quite a while. Um, well, you wouldn't be because for some reason the orbs found it to be a good idea to mine Central Park. So if you go the wrong way, you get blown up. <laughs> Which is uh, might explain all the blue, all the purple actually. Maybe that's just all fucking. Ooh, track and block. Yeah. Because he went into the Grand Central Terminal. It's not really explained here, but Grand Central Terminal is being used as the maintenance area for all the uh, orb ships. Um, and the uh, little riddle we had when uh, we opened the data cube was talking about the Statue of Liberty being the sort of uh, missile base for the orbs. So we know of two areas that they are basically commandeering for their own plans of world domination. And there'll be two areas that we have to deal with later on. And here we are with the wretched XS nightclub. Because mm-hmm. nothing says an oppressive uh, nightclub name like Wretched XS. <laughs> I get the feeling that was maybe someone's Total Recall fan fiction. Absolutely. A very Blade Runner y. Yeah, actually, it's a very Blade Runner name. So that's where one target went. So that was that was A. We know where, B, where Beast ended up in the park and seemingly stopped at that point. So now let's see where Mr. C went. King blocked? Mm-hmm. Because this is where they uh, nick the machine, it seems. It says a lot when like you're just watch when you're watching little dots go across the screen and that's the most exciting part of the game. Well, see, the thing is, is that, like, I, I don't really mind this part because essentially what you're doing is you're tracking where people are going and then you're investigating where they've been yeah. to, to kind of make up the clues. So you're kind of watching where they go in real time. So this is a real surveillance and then investigation part. And that's really, really good. Like, that, that's a that fairs it, like, quite a lot of thought. Mm. But the problem is that's, like, the game's just so fucking boring. And this part isn't really boring because you'd be kind of interested in, oh, where the fuck is he going? Where is he going? I say, but like I say, nowadays you could you could make this exceptional. Yeah, this is the thing. Like with with all with, I think because it's See, like what because you've tracked where he goes yeah. for yeah. mm. And this is the thing. Like this one is particularly important because you need to keep track of where he's going in order to get exactly. to the fourth floor. So yeah. Exactly, and the thing is, like, okay, you can accept, you can understand it's eighty-eight, so they have a, they don't really know how to do something like this, um, but the answer is not really bad gameplay sections. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, there's something. Also, else. it should actually, I should actually point out, it was kind of mentioned there. Um, even though this is nineteen eighty-eight, these graphics are actually spectacularly bad for that era. Yeah, because like, we, we played like King's Quest Four and the like, and like they've. Even those ones inside Sierra are a good bit better. Yeah, so like I, I know anybody who's not really played any games from that era would probably think, oh well, it's all blocky, it's all pixely, it's all shite. Like I think, the, but I, this is terrible. Like this, even for the even for the period, I remember the game reviews of this game when it came out were all like unanimous in that the graphics on this are fucking terrible. I don't think I don't think graphics was ever Sierra's uh, like strength, if you like. Yeah, but they've really undersold it. Like there, yeah. there's not playing to your strengths, and then there's oh holy shit, phoning it in. Mm. This is it. Like, um... okay, here oh, we go. Right Excess. Yes. Um... So this is where we are. This is Lewis Redman. Even though it's colored blue. How do we know what his full name is? Yeah, I guess we have like access to like everyone's personal information, so maybe we do know everyone in the, in the area. I'm not sure why he has like Native American face paint on though. Is that like another? Blue. I, uh, I genuinely thought they were whiskers initially. <laughs> Could be. A, swast- a nice uh, swastika on the uh, fucking wall there. Yeah, yeah, that's not the first swastika in the game. No. And it's an actual, like, Nazi swastika as well, which is even worse. Yeah. Mm, and now here's the, worst, 
here is the worst part of the game, lads. In fact, I think it's perhaps one of the worst bits of gameplay ever. <laughs> um, so, the whole idea of this area, first of all, not get stabbed. That's bad. Really, really bad for you. Um, but the whole idea of the game is basically to dodge his knives and then punch him in the mouth. But here's the thing. You can't move left or right. So the only way to like move is to jump yeah, to and jump. punch. That's the I only way you can move. Yes. Yeah. You can't even move when you're... So obviously you can't move when you're ducked. So you have to hope that he keeps like throwing knives lower than you so you can jump. Oh yeah, punching as well moves you as well, yeah. Yeah, it moves you a whole lot faster. So this is me trying to like brute force it just to like basically catch up to the knife. And I think the the, the real crowning turd in the water pipe of mm. this section is is that like <laughs> that, was, that that was that one was pretty funny. <laughs> is um that uh, like you don't just have to do this once. You, you don't even have to do it twice. No. You have to do it four times. Four times. You're absolutely right. Four fucking times. The exact same game, four times. Second one's a little bit faster. The third one, the objects are a little bit bigger. The fourth one, the guy is fucking shooting at you. <laughs> oh, man. Like, no word of a lie. This is perhaps one of the worst things I've ever experienced. And... I like it's it a good properly terrible like yeah. this is just awful like, I, I, don't, I don't understand what was going on but you, you've got to look at people and think hang on wait a minute how on earth did you look at this bit and go oh yeah this, this is good this this, this suits the, yeah, yeah this, this suits the overall aspect of the game do you know if, yeah so you know we could improve this section or we could just say fuck them which is exactly what they said they just said fuck them <laughs> like Sierra never uh, made dead body in the fucking uh, dead body are the there as well yeah I think that was the guy we just knocked out so these thugs, is it yeah that's the whole idea like, did like, you hit him so hard that he lost all of his fucking clothes yeah did he landed in the bath apparently yeah. <laughs> um I no I, I think they are just wearing robes they are wearing like black robes but they're not wearing any shoes which is fucking weird to be doing that in an alleyway like what was what do we fucking walk in on do I want to know what we walked in on? <laughs> like, I mean, okay, it's wretched excess, but I didn't realise it's an entire fucking foot fetish club. You know. Looks like you sprung a few leaks, her, her, her. <laughs> Fuck you. I, get, I, I hate their fucking smugness. Like, I know it's deliberate. I know they're taking the mickey. But this is your fault. You put this <laughs> out. You put this out thinking it was great. And for some reason, you're blaming fucking Chester on it. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand why. Like, oh look, it's Chester and a swastika. Man, this is so original and funny. And then the other thing is, like, the second boss is actually a lot easier than the first because you're able to build up a cadence. Or <laughs> what happened there? Okay, I made. Where you got? Uh, you got like the testicles. Here's what happened there, right? Because I hit punch, right? <laughs> I just ran... Okay, that one, fair enough. But before then, I ran punch and had a good second to hit jump. But it would not do it because the game decided you're getting stabbed. You know? And that happens in a in a fight scene later on where, like, the game has decided what it's doing before you can have more input. You know? And that's really, really irritating because, like, your reactions are so much quicker than the fucking PC at this rate. You know? Oh, surprise yeah. now. Like, you, I got you ducked there. in into the back of that one I'm surprised it still didn't just reverse course and shank you in the eye <laughs> yeah it should have just rolled back and just went no no would have done a fucking proper Montreal screw job of me there oh yeah you, what, you should I'm very lucky surprised that you didn't get fucked there Oh, god, yeah. Um, oh, no, no, that is the guy we knocked out, yeah. Yeah. There's always one in the background afterwards. So now we um, we talk to fucking Leonardo here after knocking out Raphael and, Mike and Michelangelo. Um, <sighs> fucking awful. Oh, yeah, they all have different fucking hair colours. Yeah. 
Because that's the only way to, like, tell these orbs to... And again, this was... That was the fucking problem. I had pressed jump, and it just would not. The game had insisted that I died. Truly awful, lads. Truly, like truly none awful. of the graffiti is actually at normal level. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just like, oh yeah, well, you know, we'll only spray paint like a full six feet above normal head height. <laughs> uh, Gary, can you grab that step ladder? I feel a like graffiti yeah. on the wall. Oh, that's a great yeah. idea, Brian. Sorry, yeah, I forgot the ladder, we ladder. can't graffiti today, but the entire wall is completely blank at our level. We cannot graffiti! Oh, by the way, can I just can't... admire the graffiti there? Like, there's a theta sign and, of course, the infamous sunshine. Oh, this is the, the gun guy. This is the gun guy. If I remember, yeah, if I remember correctly, <laughs> you kind of watch his hand. You have to keep an eye on his arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's the only way to know what, which way he's going to shoot. Is it yeah. is when he has it cocked, is it under or over? Um, but as I learned eventually, you can very easily get the cadence up. Um, in fact, you're able to, like, you know, like, matrix dodge your way up there if you can. But, uh... <laughs> I get shot several times in the chest before like then. That. Yeah. At least the graffiti matches this area. Like, okay, okay, granted, there's a knife there instead of a gun, but at least it has death. It just has death. Death. You know, like, we've come from inner city Dublin. We just, we do have graffiti that just says death because no one else could think of anything better. Apparently he was sick of my Super Mario shenanigans, so he just yeah. took it. Wow. Like I just remind you, I edited most of this out. This was a good <laughs> twenty half an hour of my life that I was not going to get back. well like we don't even get to knock him out he just throws us into the club and uh, as you can see the blue man group is uh, doing a gig here which is pretty neat oh they've got instruments and everything deadly well, that guy is actually playing okay so what happens here is you have a whole lot of people in robes in front of you and you have to pick the right one, or else you get thrown out. And you, might be thinking, and you might be thinking, well, Jonathan, that's very unfortunate, but at least you can go down the alleyway and just hop through the window again. No, you don't. You can't do that. No, you, can. you have to do the whole thing again, yeah? Yes, you do. Yes, you fucking do. Yes, you Thankfully, we say it, though. <laughs> I'm just... just outraged. Is this your this is that's a pause for you to go outraged. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I leave myself pause for an edit so I can give out fuck. Um, yeah. Oh, this is we're we're seeing in real time you realizing that you have to go through this whole thing again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But of course there's only So out of all the other multicolored robes, which are apparently illegal in this country, um it's the brown one. go for the brown one, yeah. Yes. And. Keep looking, keep looking. And there it is. And she hits with her handbag. But crucially, she dropped one key card, which was. So that means now we have 13 key cards. <laughs> and you might be asking, why is that important? I said, you'll see in about an hour. Incidentally, that um, character deal has a name, according to the walkthrough. Do you know what her name is? Girl. The bitch. <laughs> the walkthrough refers to that character as the bitch. And I don't know if it's explained in the manual, 
or maybe the walkthrough was just written by a massive misogynist. I don't know. Um, but either way, that's the name of the character. Now we're off to Strawberry Fields. Yeah, and now it's time for the second worst part of the game. So, you might have noticed there, um, as I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Ken. Fucking full of shit. Like, nothing really uh, gets the the, uh, the troubled times that we live in, where there's a sign for landmines beside the um, John Lennon's Imagine uh, plaque. Really, uh, really tragic, that is. So here's the way Central Park works, okay? Um, you're obviously, you may be aware now that we have to go left, right, and up on each screen that we have. But Central Park is really, really big. And the way for them to express that is by having multiple paths on each side of the screen. And the only way you can basically do that is by snapping to from one direction to the other, like on whichever side of the screen. So the walkthrough will say, um, go to the bottom right of the screen and then click up twice. And you'll get a new a new path. And I think there's only like like one out of like out of all these different permutations. But there's at least five for each direction on screen, which means you basically have a one in fifteen chance of brute forcing this put this part of the game. Like Yeah. That's why you had to you had to when we were tracking them, we yes. had to kind of you had to map out the route they took yeah, and take exactly. the same one. Precisely. Um but at the, th at the same token, like, your map reading skills have to be really, really good in order to get it right the first time. And even then, like, there's no way of knowing how many, which, like, right arrow you have to pick. You just have to, like, know, okay, they went this direction, then that direction, and then just see which one you get right. This like, is why I, luckily, having uh, graph paper to do my part, my uh, map on, mm. uh, was good, because the game is built out of squares. So, yeah. To do, yeah. If you are doing this without the walkthrough, okay. Um, yeah, just yeah, just making your way through a landmines public park is. And what? <laughs> <laughs> but not even that. It's like it's just they like this part of the game is which up arrow would you like? That this part of the game is like you want to go up. Yeah, if it was actually where? somewhat, it was easier to get your to make your way through the park. Mm. Um, I'm mean, like I could see the appeal of all right. Then well, you have to follow the suspects. Yes. Then trace their route. Or otherwise, then you're going to get a landmine to the bollocks. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> another, and you know, this, this, yeah. that's a good idea. That's a very good idea. It's just implemented so fucking badly. Mm -hmm. I also want to introduce you to another really annoying part of the game where uh, you'll notice, as I was saying, but the arrows moving up and down and like more or less like a third of the screen is devoted to the back arrow. Okay. Now the problem with that is that uh, enter is used for everything in this game. Okay. It's like you're literally just your one button press. And the problem with that is that if you're saving, observe, game saved and it clicks back to the screen because the arrow is pointing back. <laughs> so... That happens a lot in this game, and it actually soft locks me once later on, um, because the arrow was automatically pointed back. Cool. Um, so that's what happened to the guy in the park. He got branded with a P, and he he drew cool <laughs> on a rock using his own blood. He really, really did. No, it's Anna, a half or Oh, all right then. And is a H. Osborne. So, this looks like one of the guys from the Resistance. And as we later find, we find, I presume this is, must have been said in the manual or something, but that guy's name is Harvey Osborne. I'm not sure how you're supposed to discern what his name was from the game, but all I know is that his name is Harvey. And let's leave it at that. Um, also, I should say, because I think I accidentally edited it out, we picked up a crowbar in the park. Uh, it was just like it was basically it was like two screens ago it was there in the bushes on the left and we just picked it up um, and I was had blood on it so that looked to have been the murder weapon Me. and uh, yeah I'm shocked to hear that we used that uh, crowbar for literally everything <laughs> quite literally everything 
Um, so I thought I'd bring it up. <sighs> so yeah, um, Central Park, really good place to go, especially when uh, it's landmined. So this is Harvey Osborne's apartment now, isn't it? Yeah, and as you can see, it's looking well. Um, the orbs have kept it up nice and shiny. Oh, it's already open. Mm, indeed. <laughs> as here we have a, a nice shot of our fucking loafers there. So, again, this is standard attire in, uh, in the new age. Brown cloaks, loafers, puffy socks. And dead guy in the bathroom. Dead girl, I think you find. This is the girl in the club. Oh yeah, I like the way they do this. Oh yeah, that's the girl from the club. The, I like the way they do this is um, every single corpse has its tongue sticking out. Yeah. Like in a kind of comedic fashion. I know. Again, it really it really matches up with the uh, dark and depressing tone of the game. Um, and yeah, so the the bitch is now dead. The bitch being Anna <laughs> Osborne. Again, don't ask me why she's referred to that in the walkthrough, but let's just assume it was written by someone unpleasant and now we're at the museum um did you pick up everything at the apartment uh i believe so yeah there's only one thing it was just the key all right then yeah Oops. as you can see theodore roosevelt is looking well I believe uh, he's looking well he's looking well this is around the time when he started in the atari 2600 game um, Custer's Revenge, probably. Uh, so like <laughs> you um, Are you doing it? You look well. You're doing well. <laughs> you're doing well. You're on that horse. That's the main thing. Right, so the key op op opens the thing, so it's. Yes. So now we're into the museum, and you might be asking, uh, you know, is there a use for key cards? Yes, there is. Woo. This is the use of it. Um, in order to get to the fourth floor, we're going to use up all thirteen key cards and all these doors. <laughs> yeah that's the reason for it that's the reason for the 13th card specifically so if you want to get to the museum right where the third person is hiding from you have to clear the sewers of all key cards enter the club by fighting your way through streets of rage style hurled into the window pick the right woman in the cloak so that she can knock you with her handbag and drop the, the only woman wearing card. brown the only one we're wearing brown because everyone else is too cool for that sort of shit. And then get also, I quite, one thing I, I don't know if it happened to you while you were doing this playthrough, but when you use the key card on the door, mm. you have a limited amount of time to get through it. Yeah. Before it shuts, and then you have to use another fucking key card to open yeah. it again, which obviously breaks your locks your save game. You have about three seconds to do it. Yes, that did happen to me, and let me say it was fucking annoying. Really, really annoying. Um, obviously, you only really know where, where you're going by like following the tracker again, and yeah. admittedly, it actually does work. You know, it's 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 helpful in that sense. Um, but as you said, Neil, you have to be fast about it. You have to be adamant to where you're going, or else otherwise you're just fucked. Um, yeah, you won't get to the third day. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you can't actually. You're underground, so you can't use the fucking uh, the tracker. The tracker. So you, this is me trying to go back upstairs, but in fact, the drawing of the stairs was so bad, it looked like it was going up, but it was in fact going <laughs> going down. So this is me starting again. Honestly. So yes, so uh, viewers at home, if you want to know how to get to the fourth floor, uh, observe, and we will show you. Whereas this is me stalling for time so I can get it up on a, on a walkthrough, <laughs> so I can make this go quicker. Because at this stage, I would have been about two hours playing this and very much slowly losing the will to live. Yeah, you're probably onto your fifth line. <laughs> um... I think I was onto my fifth needle at that point. So... <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a bad sign, because it's actually just bleach in there now. Yeah. I'm almost out of death all. Help. <laughs> it's good for your system. Uh, we'll just use this time to pimp out whatever drinks we're having. Uh, Neil, what if, what's your poison tonight? 
Oh yeah, I hit the old moot because um, there were no cans. But cans are class, Neil. No, yeah, I know, but um, well, apparently well, not well, today. Apparently, well, it's been a long weekend here in Ireland. <laughs> At time of recording. And, um, and it's been ridiculously sunny. Yes. So there were fuck on cans. So I went with old moot cider because they just restocked it and it was all gravy. Oh, very nice. Uh, I'm going to assume kiwi and lime. Uh, I've got I've got both kiwi and the strawberry one as well. Delightful. So, yeah, I can't find the other two flavors anywhere for the life of me. This is so weird because the the they're promising a grapefruit and raspberry flavor that looks absolutely divine, but I can't find it anywhere. Oh, you probably see that. Passion fruit. It's the it's the yeah it's the pa uh, pineapple and raspberry. Pineapple raspberry. That's that's it. what it is. Yeah. Pineapple and raspberry, and it's written on the back of everything, and you can't find it anywhere. Even the guys in the off license I was talking to say they can't even order it. Yeah. Um. So fuck me, like if they so, if they uh, if they can't get it, you know. Yeah. So obviously, old mood. I know you guys uh, watch our stuff. Uh, so if you don't mind sending a free sample of uh, of some of that beer, that would be really really nice. Yes, please send us more of your pineapple and raspberry because it apparently doesn't exist in Ireland <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Yes, and uh, copper work. If you could do the same with your passion fruit, uh, as I'm currently drinking right now. Uh, yes, please. Well. Um, oh, yeah, it's it's so mad because like the O'Brien because the off license next to me, right? Yeah. Um, like Jesus Christ, like I don't know, they've probably got fucking like Sherlock working for their supplier department <laughs> because they've. <laughs> your mom was trying to upsell me this fucking mad cognac mm. that was made in this French chateau. But it was only made for consumption in that French chateau. It was never meant to be sold outside. Yeah, he's got three bottles of it. I was like, what the fuck do you want? No, they're, they're like thirteen. They're like thirteen hundred euros each. Well, that explains it. <laughs> but I was like, it's it. like, but this, but the thing is, like, it, it, they literally only went right. We're only going to make this for ourselves, and he winds up having three bottles of it in, in Dublin, like in, in Dublin. And yet he can't get a hold of pineapple and raspberry old moo fucking cider. <laughs> it's the way out like, of uh, cider. What the fuck? Like, I don't know. He, he kind of he kind of heavily inferred that you know how he got the hold of the bottles is somewhat illegal. <laughs> I like to think that he just somehow like donned the cat burger outfit and just stuck, stole the cognac and everything else. <laughs> I'm fairly like, certain now. I'm very certain he bought them off a guy who went, look, I broke into this French chateau and stole a load of our old wine. And he went, it's not wine, it's cognac, and I'll take it. So, what would you like? The diamonds or the cognac? The fucking cognac. I mean, have you seen my <laughs> work uniform? Give me that fucking thing. <laughs> Except for the sale of diamonds and off license. What kind of fucking monster do you think I am? <laughs> This is a lovely little segue, by the way, while you're navigating the Wolfenstein, mm. the boring Wolfenstein maze of 3D fucking... Jeez, I'm just looking at the timeline now. Fucking hell, man. You were here for ages. Yeah. Um, I might cut most of, the, most of this part out. Cause I had, Jesus. I think I had two unsuccessful attempts here. I think I may have like, like kept this part of the video just to show... Two unsuccessful attempts and you would have walked through. Yeah. Now here's the problem, right? The unsuccessful attempts were not for the the war who did the job, and I was actually following the map fine. But the two unsuccessful attempts was because um, when I tried to save before the final door, it clicked me back out of the room, and of course the door closes, so you have to use another key card, a key card I don't have. And the second time was because I was a fucking split second too late, and therefore I the fucking door closed on me. So I had to do it this three times. Presume I've kept it in. I can't remember, but it would explain perhaps the runtime we have, because uh, just all of this was suffering. <laughs> like this game is just literally a series of like very unfortunate fucking punishments. How do you mind? But like the, the whole premise is actually really, really good. Yeah. I just don't understand how like they went. Oh yeah, let's implement it in the worst possible way. Yeah, so much so that it's actually like state ta like tainting all the good parts of the game. Where like, oh, you could have gone full into why the orbs are taken over. You could have had a reason for it, but no. All what you've done instead is piss all over the great idea you had. 
with really bad gameplay. And considering it's Sierra loving how Sierra loves to serialize its own content, you can see why there's only two Manhunter games. Because they clearly went to San Francisco and went, yeah, no, I'm done. <laughs> there's only so much you can ruin this. Yeah, I just went, nah, fuck it. Right now, it's back to Space Quest with us. <laughs> da, 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 da. We're going to take all the good ideas we had from this and implement it into that. Actually, no, don't do that. <laughs> You're fired. Sorry for all the silence there, by the way. We were just waiting for the video to catch up. It was just like, okay, now we're at the final door. Now we can start commentating over something interesting rather than just key card into door, run through door before it cuts your balls off. And there we go. The final door, which is wooden. So yeah, we, that's what we, got, what we got the crowbar for, yeah. And there you have it. So I saved... I clicked enter to go back to the game, but because the arrow was pointing down, it locked me out. And I fucked up the save as well, so I had to do that all over again. Are you, you're doing this all over again now, aren't you? This is my third attempt, yeah, because the second oh, time it, clo it locked the door on me. So, thanks Sierra for uh, making something objectively bad. I know that's what you <laughs> normally do, but you really have, like, you really have outdone yourself here, lads, I must say. The fact that you guys actually got bothered by Activision is a fucking accomplishment. Yeah, it's really, 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 like, I don't, I, they clearly swept a few things under the rug before the Activision boys came around. And this was, a, this was one of them. Yeah. This is this is the Jimmy Savile of fucking Sierra games. It's the one we just don't talk about. <laughs> just scrub it from the records. It never happened. Should post this one up for is this good game? Oh, post this one up. Is this a good game to uh that uh the escapist one where they did the slightly civil war? Oh, Have you yeah, watched yeah. that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, somebody somebody pinged it on to me. Um, because they're, the latest one there is actually on um, the Epic Game Store. Okay. Um, I was saying, should Epic Game Store exclusives be boycotted? Right. And uh, but, but I see the thing is, is I quite like the format of them just debating it. Mm. You know, I'm always about that. But the thing is, is that they randomly decide who's going to be for and who's going to be against the topic. So you're yeah. not actually getting somebody who even believes it and. In this one, um, it's Croshaw, like it's Ben Croshaw. Yeah. And he very clearly does not want to do it. <laughs> so he just keeps fucking repeating his own argument over and over again, soullessly. Like it's, <laughs> it's so bad. And I'm going, oh, what the fuck? That's just escape is yeah. like pushing the gimmick too much. Like, okay, granted, they're, 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 that's probably because they have the same two people doing it. So. Therefore, regardless of the term that they have to be opposing, you know, alternatively, they could just agree. And that's the point of the video. You know, you're kind of missing the point there, lads. <laughs> or, maybe, know, yeah. or perhaps alternatively, get someone from the team that has the contrary opinion. Ooh, isn't that fucking controversial? Yeah, I know. It, it's, so, it's so mad, like... Mm. But uh, no, it's just it's just funny. Yeah. Um, it's just there's a lot of like pity I won't play it because it's on the Epic Store. I'm like, what? <laughs> and like uh, all the gripes on the fucking about the Epic Store is like, oh, there's no wish list, there's no chat function, there's no um, so there's the no review. That it's not Steam. It's yeah, not there's no review as well. Like, mm. and I was sitting there going, I was like, have you ever read a fucking Steam review? <laughs> they're yeah. fucking terrible like yeah they're just pissy whinge bags there's actually <laughs> i was just watching a video there uh today about the worst ever <laughs> video game reviewer 
Um, this seems like a good time to bring him up, actually, because we got I've got fuck all else on screen. Um, there's a this guy was on public television in Maryland, right? There's a guy called George Wood, uh, and his whole thing was that because he was on public television, right? He did a video game review show, you know, kind of like how like um, uh, like Game Master, you know, was was for the UK. He kind of did something like that, except yeah, you know, they didn't have fucking Sir Patrick Moore giving his thoughts on what Battletoads was like. So this guy, no, oh, uh, Patrick, Patrick Moore was he gave the cheats out. He gave the cheats exactly, but like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but imagine if like ask. Patrick, if, if Patrick people Moore. <laughs> If, if Patrick people Moore have to ask opinion. Patrick Moore, oh, how, how, how do I get my uh, players on Pez to sprint forever so they don't get tired? And he's like, I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sir Patrick Moore is like, do I look like I give a shit? I want to look at stars. Mm. Um, but yeah, so imagine if he had done the re- reviews himself as an old man trying to play these games, because that's what George Wood is. I think the guy is supposed to be like 40, 45, and the man has very clearly never played a video game before. Um, like his, uh, all of his reviews basically are based off him cheating to get to the final level and then reviewing the final level as he, as the footage he has is of him failing the level, right? And he gives like, like grades based off the fucking uh, gameplay and like uh, the difficulty. So there's like, the, his three criteria is gameplay, graphics, and difficulty. <laughs> and that's the those are the three criteria and the gassing is like he what was it like he basically he loves bad games and he hates good games because he thinks like the bad games are good and vice versa um like there's a whole youtube channel that's basically like acquired all of his reviews and uh you can just watch them all and see how fucking wrong he is over everything i think it's just be- a contrary dickhead then oh dinosaur oh. Oh yeah, you're getting chased by a monster now. Yes, and you yeah. get your head cut off. Because the thing about the American Museum is that it has a pet dragon that uh, guards everything. Um, yeah, we should have been prepared for that. In fairness, like I love how, <laughs> in the hopes that anybody <laughs> helps like, that anybody get hurting in locked doors towards like, the gigantic thing, which by the way has the um, has the fucking. Um, has the bar on the wrong side <laughs> by the way that bar is meant to be on the other side the other if you side, want to keep yeah. it out. it's to keep the dragon out <laughs> yeah. like imagine that though the fucking cheek of that you've had to be using 13 key cards to get to the this path and you're about to open the door and go oh suddenly a dragon killed you <laughs> oh, oh man you're so bad at video games can, if you don't have the crowbar mm. you won't be able to open that door but you never used the the door, the crowbar to open the door. Mm-hmm. You bedazzled the dragon, and he opens the fucking door. Yeah. So you don't actually even need the crowbar. No, you just made enough noise to awake the dragon that's nope. sleeping yeah, in yeah. the American Museum of History. Oh, and I love this part because you have to make a no here of the guy's tat. Yes. <laughs> so this is the guy that was working on the on the robot machine, uh, and a blow blew up in his the face. Rope. Yeah. Um, and he was holding a module, which is very important later on. Absolutely, as well as a tat is, because you need those white dots. Mm-hmm. And of course, they frame the map on the wall of their secret idol. Which is what <laughs> people do. And, like people That's do that all the time. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, but yeah, going finishing off on George Wood. Um, on a review of Tomb Raider, he suggested in order to make Tomb Raider more interesting, that uh, they should run a storyline where. Uh, Lara Croft gets breast cancer. <laughs> As a sort of like, you know... <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to go with. I think he was just trying to go with fucking, like... Oh, this should respond to all the titillation about Lara Croft by immediately getting rid of the one thing she has. Two things. Two things, sorry. Yeah. Well, after the operation, it'll be only one. So. <laughs> 11 minutes later. Really specific amount of time. There's 11 minutes later. Not 10, not 12, 11 yeah, he was working off GPS, so. <laughs> so, yeah, we've done our job. We've identified the three suspects in the case as Hannah, Anna Osborne, Harvey Osborne, and Randy Orton. Uh, he, granted, that last one came out of nowhere. So, he's uh, a fucking snake, man. He's a fucking he's snake. He's a right fucking snake. <laughs> he's a snake. Uh, that was day two. That was day two, yeah. We're halfway through the game, lads. Um, <laughs> 
Thank God. Uh, oh boy. The fun part is I actually don't remember the second half of the game because the first half was so goddamn terrible. <laughs> you kind of got like flash blindness from the first half. A little bit, yeah. I was just like, I was on autopilot then for the rest of it. So it was kind of like, just let me, just let me finish the game, please. Just like I know it's really short, but you're really outstanding. You're fucking welcome. So an orb has been killed in the Greenwood Cemetery. Watch as we pour a forty out for our homie. <laughs> pour an out for one, Tommy. Mm -hmm. We were obviously uh, have great sympathy for the orb. You know that's why we're uh, we're uh, going to investigate it and definitely find the killer. Also, really stupid that the light switch is over the other side of the room from your bed. Yeah. <laughs> This is not a well designed. <laughs> As a building design engineer, I, this is not a very well designed apartment. <laughs> this is the one. That's the one thing that's triggering you. Not the bad gameplay. Yeah, that's the thing. Not the key cards. The fact that they put the fucking <laughs> light switch on the other side of the fucking room from the bed. What a fucking idiot. What absolute shits. So, so the target has left Greenwood Cemetery, and he's. On a bus, presumably, or maybe just riding one of the orbs as a fucking space hopper. And traveling, 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 more traveling, yet more traveling. My god, oh, yeah, but in case anybody even like uh, has kind of zoomed out on the fucking the what we got told at the start there, apparently, a dead orb has been at yeah. the cemetery, the cemetery, yeah. yeah. So he's popped into. Doesn't mean he got all Apparently, for a resistance, no, it's not. But I think I think the uh, the assertion is that it's been murdered. Mm -hmm. This was an orb in the prime of its life when it didn't have any cataracts at all. Just a <laughs> just a slightly scratched retina from the break from the great Bright, war. shining iris staring into the future. Indeed. Big, beautiful blue eye just waiting to do things. <laughs> oh, and look, our little specky friend is back. Mm -hmm. See? The two of them are now here. So we're off now to Abdul's pawn shop. Yes. Well, as you know, as you know from what happened with the guy in the uh, in the park, this is presumably the guy that's been killing off the resistance. Mm -hmm. um, this is Phil. This is Phil, yeah. And as you find out... Um, because Harvey was trying to write out his name, his real full name, and it truly is an evil name, Neil. The most evil person in New York is a man called Phil Cook. <laughs> Little Betty with the save game there. Ever so slightly. Um, so yes, so now we're, uh, we're off to solve a murder, I guess. Murder of a gigantic eyeball. Mm -hmm. Which, let's be fair, is a serious crime um, in this dark age we live in. Like, okay, fair enough. You can take, you can kill a human, but if you kill an eye, that's just that's just not on. Like, that that is what we would call bad form, you know. And into the center. Turn off, go inspect the carnage. Uh, <laughs> what the music? the fucking music <laughs> I love the headstones yeah Pin. he died for his father but as you see there uh, like the, t it, the eye was impaled on Tim Jones's grave which must mean that Tim Jones's dad must be related in this because that's how murders work you mm -hmm. you leave the evidence at somewhere where you can be tracked Absolutely. And yeah. the other two marked graves are Joe Green and Olive Cole. Mm. Which were conveniently typed in a way so that in case an orb was spiked at a certain <laughs> angle, you could still read the tombstone, which I thought was just great planning, you know. Just that's to, that's just a murderer that's just a murderer that's thinking ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's just that's great foresight. We should, we should have quit now. We're clearly dealing with a fucking Professor Morier. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, by the way, did you like how the cinema had the uh, two, like, 
sources of plagiarism there, Sean, which is War of the Worlds and 1984. Yeah. Now, in case you're wondering what the, what Sierra has based this on in any way. Well, because you absolutely would not have guessed that from any of this crap. Mm. I love what the drawing of the camera is so bad on the right. I, I only realised now that it's a camera. I thought it was a robot what, upside down. So unfortunately, we can't uh, get into the safe just yet. We need to get a code, which we will very soon. So now our next protocol is to check out Abdul's uh, pawn shop, which uh, apparently our, our target and his friend went to. So... No, man, you're off to the church. Yes, quite right. Um, so, yeah, the church is... We kind of... The church is where the guy's... Um, his fucking... His tattoo comes into play. Because if you noticed, his tattoo was a 5x3 grid. Indeed. Indeed, you're quite and right. His candle pew is 5x3. Yeah. So there was lots of black dots and some white dots. Mm -hmm. And guess what you have to do? Light three candles. There yes. we go. So... The, those two symbols are important. Um, yeah, as so well yeah. as module A. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, we have two modules now. Two more, and we get to uh, complete our transformer. <laughs> he turns into a little Voltron. You can't have the drones. <laughs> We're actually just uh, building the matrix of leadership here. Um, <laughs> so we can finally take on these orbs once and for all. But, um, but yeah, so as I said, then we go to the pawn shop to uh, mm -hmm. the game. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, fucking Two Face is looking well, isn't he? Dead or oh no, he's dead or is he? Oh, he's one of the bomb. He's still alive. Holy shit! Yeah, I may say he's looking radiant in his robe. I don't understand why everybody has to look like one of the fucking sand people. I don't know. Or Jawas, <laughs> if anybody's a Star Wars fan. Nice swastika there. Also, yeah. we have to pick up two symbols that we saw. Well, we actually have to pick up three symbols, Neil. <gasps> because the cross in itself was a symbol because it was in the church. <laughs> so we got the symbol wrong. So Abdul uh, is absolutely in his right to cut our head off. Absolutely. Yeah, it, there's 16 symbols. And if you pick any of them, he'll just behead you. Yeah. Just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, fuck off. Why does he have his nose like like on the on the plaque? He's That's human. His... Yeah. This is somewhat human looking. Mm. We <laughs> What tone are they going for with this game that the guy's got fucking frilly underwear? I'm just genuinely shaking my head here. <laughs> genuinely shaking my head like just the the sheer notion the combination of the brown robe the love heart underwear the bright blue socks and grey loafers like danger is here death is near okay so now we have some picture puzzles and we have to decipher a password out of these uh, out of these paintings so this one is uh, 41 because the four the trees are casting a four and a one shadow. And uh, I just do that wrong so we can show you the hilarious death. See? <coughs> Comedy gold. Um oh, oh my. Just this the, the smug Kenneth Williams face just I look at the adds to my picture, opinion. despite the fact that they, they deliberately shown you the picture. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, of course, you picture, you idiot. Yeah. So, yes, 41 was the right answer because obviously you have to go from the tree's perspective as well. So, so I really love their multiple doors on this one. Yeah. Um, there's actually four puzzles here. Look like the, uh, the bodyguard, the fucking the, the fetish club outside. 
Um, so yeah, this one is... Uh, there's no real visual cue for this one. Everything is all Halloween themed. So the code is 103198. Or whatever it was. 1030. Oh, it's... 1031. It's... Uh, yeah, it's 1031. Which, by the way, if you're European, is really bad because... Mm. Yeah, that's you, you, that's you Halloween in the month day yeah. um, where we would use day month. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they have not even bothered to properly localize any of this shit. No, they haven't. Uh, the code here, by the way, right? So there's a tree pointed backwards and a tree pointed forwards and then tree plus tree. So the code is 264. And that's where that's how you get the puzzle there. Um, <laughs> I get the feeling that this was on catchphrase. Roy Walker would have been shot at dawn. Um, Luckily yeah, this so one. the code to 264 is basically one is less than three, then three plus three, which is six. Well, less than three is two. Yes. Three plus three is six, and then greater than three, which would be four. Yes. So. Whereas this one is uh, the number of twigs on the uh, on the dead branches. So it would be four, two, five. How are you supposed to get that? I don't know. But the asking for logic in this game is... Uh, <laughs> You're looking in the wrong place. Also, if you take too much time to figure that out, you die as well. Yeah, so yeah. It is just it. Oh, another P. Yes. And another fucking stupid tongue sticking out. Yep, yeah, and as you can see there, uh, that was the guy's um, name was Harry, as was written on his uh, robe. Mm-hmm. So that's Harry I Jones. Keep, I, I always keep my uh, name stitched on the inside of my robe. Well, just in case you forget it, you know. Ah, this is Phil. Hi. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that fucking, like, whimsical, like, happy-go-lucky music for finding a serial killer. It's like, <laughs> yeah, the happy-go-lucky music for a knife fight. He's got a knife and he's gonna stab you in the chest. Oh, he dodges too. He does dodge. Um, this is the main. This was, and again, a very clunky part of the game because, like, you're gonna try and dodge and hit him and like not get stabbed, but the, the animation. Well, I think it's the animation or the timing of the game is so clunky that like, you will try and jump up or down or duck. But the game has, again, already decided what it's doing and you have no input. You know, the game will decide if you want, if you want, if you will play or not. You know, it's like fucking Conan O'Brien and the Simpsons. And as you can see, he does a uh, fucking proper flippy shit here. Like this is the... Yeah, if you miss time your punches, he dodges them quite well. Yeah, he does. Uh... Of course, we can do a backflip as well when prompted. So yeah, Hi. you're. <laughs> this is uh, apparently Sierra inspired uh, what would be the Osprey Ricochet match that uh, broke the internet. So it's good. Oh, to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to know where they got their inspiration. You know, I knew they got they, they had to steal it from somewhere. So here we go. Here is the climactic fight now. Again, nothing says uh, evil villain like a uh, red hair and mustache, and green paley skin. Truly is the biggest bad guy there is. <laughs> and that apparently, that punch to the stomach sent him flying and he, we can pick up a card. What a hero we are. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's the code to uh, Harry safe in, uh, in the, uh, in the theatre. Of course, we only figure out that uh, it's actually Harry Jones runs the, th the theatre by looking at some of the things in the office and go, oh, wait, that's Harry. No way. Mm. Or he can search for it. Yeah. Exactly. And if anybody realises why the Jones name has twigged the bell with him, mm -hmm. he is the father of Tim Jones. Yes, exactly. So he killed the orb as well. So we even have our suspect. So we can search for Harry Jones on this and it'll tell us theatre manager. And his address is just there as well, which is perfect. So day three has gone superbly well. We've uh, found the suspect, um, which has been conveniently been killed by the local serial killer. And then we had a bit of a fist fight with the local serial killer and sent him flying because apparently he is 70 pounds. 
So see the whole investigation and information finding out part of this is really good. Oh my no. god, it's so terrible. I know. If they just cut out all the arcade segments, this could have been a possible game. Nay, what I say it up straight into actually somewhat decent. Mm. So <laughs> I got really annoyed here because, like, even they couldn't get keypads right. So when you're, like, moving your arrows around, right, and it... Like, I'm clicking six there, but it takes nine. So, that, like, your, bar your arrow has to clip back, clip into a number for it to press it. So, like, realistically, you could be, like, trying to press one, but because it doesn't... It's not exactly on one, it takes the previous number you had. So, another mild irritants to add to the list. Lock up a note like that. Jesus. Mm. I know, yeah. This is how the orbs keep control over us by taking, eliminating paper from our economy. I feel like I'm uh, vocalising all of our uh, viewers' uh, thoughts there with our save file. <laughs> So terrible. Mm -hmm. Sure is, partner. Sure is. Just be thankful you didn't play it. Again. <laughs> oh man, I'd have just been, I'd have been so drunk playing this. Oh. Now to find Harry's apartment. There it is. I would say he has a nice place, but uh, he has a rotting corpse of Oscar the Grouch there outside, so that's not really... Uh, <laughs> Appetizing. Oh, the door's still open. Mm. Oh, look how look how eighties this is. This the is so are, retro. The seats are vinyl for fuck's sake. They're look a nice uh, everywhere, which is the company that published this. Yeah. <laughs> so did you <laughs> that was it? That's how we had to do. We had to just smash the radio open to get the module. Sounds good to me. Actually, one of the better puzzles in this game. <laughs> one of the better uses of the uh, crowbar as well, I found. At least it's being fucking used. Mm. And you're not trying to jimmy open a radio while a dinosaur comes up and rogers you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't understand that. Why a dragon of all things? Like, And it's never mentioned. No, there's no reason for it. This is like, oh yeah, it's the uh, dragon that guards the museum. You know the dragon. Like, the, the security guard, you know. Like, it's one of those just random, like, Sierra things that you just had to just chalk up as, like, miscellaneous. Like, there's, <laughs> no, there's no reason for it. It's like, oh, this is funny. Is just it really? cause. Just, yeah, just cause. So this is then us trying to find uh, uh, Phil Cook. Once I figure out that's what his name's supposed to be. Again, I was just kind of more flabbergasted at how... how <laughs> evil that name is you know yeah so that's the cool part he was trying to he, he just got on the part of the cook part yes precisely there's no fills in the, in new york not one <laughs> there he is oh oh look how evil he is jesus he's christ he's gray He's and he's a public servant, it's even worse. <laughs> exactly. You can't get any more evil than that, lads. Just saying. If you're a grey-skinned uh, civil servant, write in and tell us how evil you are. <laughs> Try down in the comments what's the most evil thing you've ever done. And we'll see if it matches up with Phil Cook. So the reason we uh, looked him up on, on the mad there is so we can check out his apartment. Uh, so that is relevant. And uh, apparently he lives in the Empire State, State Building. Which is a handy little uh, gig for him to get. Now the fun part is trying to find the Empire State Building in New York.
And there it is. <laughs> Fantastic. See that one white dot on the map? That's where the Empire State Building is. One of the most prominent buildings in the world is just a tiny little dot on the map. Just a little dot. Just a little dot. The reason I say that, I, I'm going to give out about that later on, so I'm putting the pin in it for now. <laughs> so this is Phil's place. As you can see, he has Ooh, a nice... Uh, a picture of an eyeball. Yeah, picture of an eyeball right beside his cum bucket, which is nice. <laughs> um... Wow, we need a bucket for it. Jesus Christ. Mm. He just loves he ice so be, much, man. He's a jack in a 24-7. Yeah, man. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, how, it's how the orbs keep control. It's just, like, yeah. just bombarding us with porn. Just a headless jacket. Mm. I was really hoping we'd use the crowbar to smash open the computer and find the fourth module in here. <laughs> no, afraid not. The password <laughs> puzzle. I like, yeah. I, I, I like that. Or type by. Not exit. Just <laughs> exactly. Um, I love as well that the puzzle, the the password of the uh, computer is you cook. Mm -hmm. Just fuck it. So anyway, this is. Um, oh, this I should is, quit here. Yeah, exactly. I was like, well, there's no turning back now. Um. So yeah, this is um this is the computer hub for the entire orbs operation. Um. So. What we're doing here is this: they have four sites around New York, and basically by fucking about with their settings, we're figuring out like where they are. So that robot we recognize from the hospital, right? So we know that the Alpha area is Bellevue Hospital, um, and we moved them away from the from the from the uh, morgue, which means we can start exploring the hospital a bit tomorrow, um, and as you can see, apparently they do uh, a harvest. In the hospital as well, which we will see very soon. Um, as you can see, the the beta area is actually Grand Central Station. That's where they have all their fleets, which we will uh, avail of later on. Uh, again, I can't. I think we can just start fiddling about with settings just so we can show that. There we go. Now, how you're supposed to know that's Grand Central Station from that picture? I don't know. But I guess that's to see how good your New York geography is. And yes, it has to show us twice for some reason. Next up then is uh, the Gamma area, which is uh, apparently this <laughs> the Statue of Liberty. And uh, they basically replace Statue of Liberty to be, become a massive air filter where they're purifying the air that suits the orbs and not humans. So that's presumably the reason how they're keeping us all uh, subservient is by polluting our air. And uh, you can switch between air and ground control. You'll want it to be ground control for later on. But uh, this is just a neat little anima animation for no reason. I love as well the fact that, like, from Statue of Liberty, one of the most prominent area places in New York, and one of their main, like, like hotspots for orb activity, just one robot gardener. That's enough. Like, we don't need anyone else. <laughs> just the one. Just the one. Like, you know, it's, you, don't need, you don't need anyone else in there, because, like, who else is going to be flying out to the Statue of Liberty to take down the orbs? You know, maybe one person who would do that. I love as well that the robot is programmed to march. <laughs> they insisted on that, apparently. With his cock out as well. No less. And I stand here phallically. Erg. I stand here erect. <laughs> I'm ready to rock. <laughs> exactly. And uh, Delta is the Empire State Building, which is where we are mm -hmm. right now. And uh, there's nothing we can fuck, we, we we can't fuck about with anything here, unfortunately. Uh, but again, how we're supposed to know that that, that this is Delta site, I don't know. Presumably guesswork. Mm. 
Yeah, you get the sig turn on the signal tra tracker and, and switch on. But we actually want to keep it to access security, um, so we can start our right. day right. I didn't ask for your opinion, uh, Kenneth Williams. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I will decide when I will save. You won't. So at this point, the orbs have, uh, they're insisting on a, on a suspect, which we will give them to keep them happy. Like, the big thing is, like, uh, like there's no uh, penalty for getting the names wrong, by the way. You could just put in whatever name you want, and it'll... 18 minutes later. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were coming from the Empire State Building, you know, so it was a bit longer, longer walk. I love as well that our bed has no pillows. That's just harsh. <laughs> we'll, they're, they're, live, they're truly living in a world with no comfort. Both visually or physically. Yep. No, oh, here comes the orb. And here we go with day four. The final day. So he flies in through the window, then takes the lift. Be polite. How was the orb talking, by the way? <laughs> Illegal access. Oh, you're being we're being transferred to Chicago. Yes, and if you uh, remember from their first victim, Reno Davis, who was also a manhunter, he was being transferred to Chicago as well. So, perhaps we're getting a little bit too okay. deep. And you can see that because the orb stopped before he left move away. Mm. Mm. See that? Subtle. Subtle. It's actually surprisingly subtle. For <laughs> yeah, considering the rest of the game. <laughs> it's quite something. So yes, this is what we uh, had selected in uh, Phil's room previously. Was uh, the tracker that's now in the uh, in the A in the fucking server of the? Uh, yeah, it's like the Alliance security. supercomputer. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, the the funny part is that we're gonna watch this tracker, and now we have a little mini game where you have to try and find it. Du -du 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 -du. And, uh, you know the you know the alliance supercomputer has a green man living inside it. <laughs> he is that? the analyzer. Yeah, but he's an actual like he's a he's a head that lives in the computer. Um, it's pretty common knowledge if you're uh, if you've got the know how. But uh, fucking look at him. I don't know why, but it, it, to me he looks like Chris Eubanks. <laughs> Hulk signal is being analyzed. Signal analysis is negative. Like, what is this? What is any of this? Is this the best way you could recreate computer hacking in 1988? <laughs> is by having. This is basically. This is not. This is signal analysis. So uh, you've to ba basically what we're doing is we're trying to like tag signals up mm. and it's going to like I'm not gonna say I'm a I'm an expert in this sort of thing, but surely there are better <laughs> ways of expressing this than having a green Chris Eubanks gorning at the screen because you got the wrong answer. Like, okay, maybe call me crazy, but I think there are better ways of doing this. <laughs> I love as well. I love as well there is like a help section, but I think that's just generally. It's just like, if you require counseling after this game, this is the phone number to call. <laughs> Oh, 
riveting game. It's uh, it's truly incredible. Like, uh... <laughs> so the whole idea of this puzzle is to basically track the signal that came from the uh, yellow cone there, and uh, once mm -hmm. you do that, you've uh, you've won. So it's actually that one just there. So thrill now as we uh, get our analyzer to go crazy. And he does, he goes batcha. Jesus. <laughs> what, was, what was any of that? Like, like, none of this needed to be done. Honestly, if you are one of the people who work in this game, tell me what the fuck was that supposed to be? <laughs> Is that was your best way of expressing what an analyzer was? Was a fucking orc in a little box that like has a stroke whenever you get it right. Whoops, seventy first floor on the Empire State Building. Yes. And you know what? The target is us. Dun dun dun. <laughs> if we uh, continue watching the mad, it'll just go to our apartment and go to bed. Uh, so it's at this point we realise oh we're the one that's being hunted now so it's time to uh, make our rebel alliance official and start uh, fucking shit up <laughs> now I don't know if you die if you like you like complete the tracking I presume you don't you know that's just the game I making you realise it's you don't think you do I don't it's designed to tell you Oh, here. It... Yeah, it's so. basically just the game saying that you're next, essentially. Mm. You're next to get cooked. Or is it filled? I think filled is better, isn't it? It's more, more of a sexual innuendo. Far more. Yeah, far more, far more. Right, so we've figured out now that, that we are next on the... We're next on the hit list, which means we have to take action. Um... And our first port of call is the hospital. Because uh, we... Because we redirected the sentry robot. Exactly. We did indeed. Um, that also means then we can see what this food processing plant is inside the hospital. I hope it's chicken. Good God, I really hope it's chicken. <laughs> it's not. I, I know it's not, Neil, but I just wanted to live in hope. Oh, I'm alert. It is not. Man, look at that pixelated corridor. <laughs> if you ever wanted to see an eye having a nervous breakdown, that was it. And now we're about to go into another arcade level, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, this is a cutscene. Oh no, it's not. No, it's not. It's a cutscene. <laughs> look at this. We're getting chased by a robot with a ten-inch cock. What is this? What is this fucking game? You know, Guns N' Roses had an album, right, mm. album art band because of something similar with robotic yeah. rapists. And I, I just, I don't see how they got it. Got it. Neither do I. And I even, he didn't even kill us. He just threw us into this room of, like, a massive pile of skeletons. Holy shit. Why the mute? I think that was. Why? I think they nicked that off the end of an Amiga game. Like it's just like you've beaten this game, you have saved our heroes, and the kingdom is now free. Go and rest. Except here, it's you for when you're when you're looking at it. Yeah. The food is human. Silent Green is people. Oh wait, that's another movie they hmm? fucking ripped off. Which wasn't referenced at their uh, movie theater. No, it didn't. That was a secret Easter little Easter egg for all the nerds in the crowd. Nerd! Honestly, like. And, uh. Game saved, but my arrow was pressed down, so I fall out, out of the pile of skeletons back to where I was. This does not get annoying at any point. So, obviously, I have to take action here. Like, this is just unacceptable. I can't just stand here. And watch humans get like chopped up here. But you get seen, and then you get shot. <laughs> I turn to death. What the hell? Yeah. You're right. You're right, Ken. 
I really should do something about the guard robot. I should do something about the robot that vaporized me. Yeah. So the one thing to do about the guard robot is to do nothing and wait for them to... Yeah, finish. you just have to wait until they leave the room, yeah. So even the hint they give, they gave there was wrong. Yeah. Like... Charlatans, all of them. Like again, I have to like process the logic here. Is that the the protagonist has basically watched six people be chopped up. Perhaps they were dead, perhaps they weren't. And basically go, no, I must bide my time and not save the human race from destruction. I don't know. Gonna get vaporized by that sentry robot. What can he do? He's only armed with a crowbar. Mm. But that crowbar has done everything for us. Like it's 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 OP. Like it's I'd say in a battle between laser and crowbar, crowbar would win. Absolutely, you're not playing. Mm. Go Gordon Freeman on it. Absolutely. As and as you can see there, um, because I saved and had the temerity of been looking back during it, I fell over again. Which is just great. So, next thing to do, we take the module, and then to make our cunning escape, we go up the conveyor belt. But first, a hilarious death. <laughs> Again, I want to point out how exactly do the orbs eat? Like, let's just, let's just try and, like, work out how that actually happens. Where exactly does the meat go to with the orbs? Do they just soak themselves in it? Is that the idea? And, uh... Okay, this is now the uh, third most annoying part of the game. This is the, the arcade level that we were talking about earlier. Yes. <laughs> the arcade level. The real wholesome level where we play a uh, black man's penis climbing up a whole load of wires. Like, honestly, somebody... Somebody must have looked at this and said, Gary, change the fucking model. But look at it. It's even got red sides. Like, that's horrible. What game is this like? The, this is a direct rip off of what? What game is it? It's like an old NES game. Well, Donkey Kong would have came to, come to mind there, but. It's, it's not Donkey Kong. Or it might actually be Donkey Kong. It's everything in elements of Donkey Kong. It is Donkey Kong, I think you're right, yeah. At least the music is at least some way fun. <laughs> um. Yeah. That happens a lot. That happens quite a lot. So obviously, like, you're the head of your um, phallus there can't hit any of the purple uh, blocks and can't hit any of the uh, sparks. And the problem with this is, this is randomized, right? There's no pattern here. It's purely, it's, it's procedurally generated. So you might get like three or four sparks raining down on you. And because you are a really slow climber, sometimes you'll be just stuck in no man's land and you're just gonna get hit by the sparks. Which I suppose is why there's no death program in here. But at the same time, then why would you just, why would you do a randomly spawning system like this? Case in point. So which are, when you're at the top of the wire system there, you literally have no time to respond if a spark comes. So you basically have to get out of that section as quick as you can so you can give yourself time to, to react if anything does come showering down. So, yeah, this is a this is another particularly bad part of the game. I'm not gonna lie. I 
don't think the uh, whimsy is of the music is really covering for how awful this plays. I wouldn't even mind, but it's just so out of line with the rest of the game. <laughs> like, none of this suits. None of There's it. just no continuity. Yeah, that's the problem. So yeah, I do, I do make some progress in the end. Um, a really funny thing thing was happening that if you keep if you keep like pressing the left button enough, right, it's like registering a little bit too much um like on on one side. So I had a section where like I was basically hanging off nothing because <laughs> I was pressing the left button so much during that one part. You can kind of see it happening there. See it there, like so. I'm actually yeah. like not on any wires there at all. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm hanging on to but it's certainly not wires but it still registers you on and takes you down anyway so it's all needless in the end <laughs> I was actually so off the wires there that was gas oh dear but yes Well, you can't uh, blame the game on its variety. It really, uh, really shone through on that sense. <laughs> got away no. with that one. Really got really? away with that one. Yeah. Should I? Oh no, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying it's good variety. I'm just saying that there is variety. I never said it was good. It's just shy variety. Oh, it's awful. This is the, and this is the worst part as well. Look, there's actually no way to get off this wire. So if you see sparks going, you just have to get off. So what happened? So if otherwise, then it's back to the start. Right back to the start. And here's the thing: if you're in the middle of the war, you there's no way for you to get off. So yeah. you're just gonna take the hit and start yeah. again. That's fucking terrible. Like the game could could physically pin you down here, and there's just no way of like fixing that. There's no way out. Truly awful. And then we get get smashed to another window. <laughs> and what is that? The eighth story building? I know here. But we survived apparently. <laughs> I can only imagine that our cl our cloak like acted as a sort of like makeshift parachute. But honestly. So anyway, that's um that's a hospital dealt with. Um, so now it's time to uh, head to Grand Central Station. Yeah, it's time for us to nick a spaceship. We go to the window that the robot was fixing previously. Yeah, exactly, because he told it to stop. Well, that has actually fixed it. Which means we're going to make it broken again. I think a trusty crowbar. <laughs> Literally the one useful item in the game. And yeah. Look at that happy little ship that we're going to start steering. Now Neil, you've played this game before. Am I right in saying? Yeah, many, many moons ago. The spaceship. Was it as bad as you? Was it bad, or am I? Or was it just really, really shit for me in particular? I just. Giving and basically reloading loads of times. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of the issue as well. <laughs> um, there's, I think in total, there's like two. I suppose like two and a half sections with this uh, part and like all of them play badly but for all different reasons you know like the main problem is that like it, the, 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 the ship doesn't steer properly you know and uh, that like really comes to play when you're actually trying to like when you're later on in a battle with it on with the ship and you're trying to dodge things 
And so you're you're just going like go right, go right, and it's just not moving. And in one case, it turned left as I was hitting right. Like what is this shit? Of course, you have to hit the buttons in the right order, or else you'll get uh, attacked by uh, blue seagulls. The mini drones. Oh. Yay! Look at them go. They're all absolutely livid. <laughs> Okay, so a few other things we need to do before we start. We have to arm our bombs. Uh, we've got four, bomb, four bombs for four targets. The four targets that we're going to hit that were mentioned on the uh, on the computer. And again, you'd be shocked to hear that if you get uh, one bomb wrong, it's pretty much game over. Because you've got it, because you fucked it up. So that button uh, opens the uh, escape the fucking tunnel door, which we will need. And then the last one is lift off. Now, out of all the things that I played um, in this game, this is the one section where it's really hard to show how bad this controls. Because, like, watching it back, it is going to look like I just oh, don't know. But those have to be experienced. Like, yeah, it does. Yeah. It really does. Like, I, I am literally just pressing right here. And the, the, the ship is immediately going, oh, you want me to go up as well? It's like, no, I want you to just go right. And then this is me holding down the right button. And then it just goes, okay, now I'm moving. Now I'm going super speed. It's like, fucking... Just so inconsistent, and it just will not stop fucking moving. <laughs> it's another problem. Just like, just stay still. Um, yeah, it it's really really bad. Um, it's a good thing we don't have some sort of maze to uh, go through with this. Sh oh, never mind. There it is. Oh, like a pipe maze. Yes, like a like a pipe maze with really sharp jagged edges that you bounce off every single time. Like a fucking pinball. There's only one correct path through the pipe maze, and it just happens to be the longest and, and longest and most cumbersome path of them all. Like I didn't even touch the wall there, and I bounced off it. I can actually hear your screamer playing this. <laughs> I can feel your top pure liquid angst. Yeah. It's, not, it's that too, yes, but it's also the fact that like I am legitimately trying to control this properly. Like I am genuinely thinking, like, okay, is it because I'm hitting one button too much? Is it like too much input? Do I have to use a num number pad? That works a few times, but it's not the answer. There is actually just no right way of controlling this ship. You just have to fucking re bounce your way around the the park, like. And okay, I can accept that maybe. This is them trying to simulate, oh, this is you trying to control an alien spaceship. Do that in a fucking cutscene. You know, when I take control, I'm going to be able to do this properly. Not the fucking calamity you have in, in charge of the ship. <laughs> this is so fucking bad. Like, imagine, if I didn't know which way I was going the first time, I genuinely think I might have broken my computer over this. Because <laughs> if I went the wrong way once over this, I was just going to say, tell to you, we're not playing Manhunter, we're going to move on to something else. We're not going to do this again. But it was genuinely, it was only at the last level where I really, really started to reach that point of, like, I really could be doing something better with my time. And really... Does all those subscribers really matter at the end of the day? I was actually literally and literally anything better. Pretty much, yeah. Even then, right? I was pressing right down and went left. Why? <laughs> oh my god. 
just bouncing off the fucking pencil of paint is just really tipping me there. It's every single pixel just kicking your ass constantly. It's terrible. So this is me. Now, what I was trying to do there was trying to use the number one on the number pad, which would be di like down and left. But as you can see, sometimes it will just pick one direction, and then maybe occasionally might do both. But it's not guaranteed. Some sort of a random access control. <laughs> Something like that. I, I think like the game just decides on like a on a on a random system whether you will be able to move or not. Like, like this section in particular is so badly programmed, it's not even funny. The fact that you can't control the ship properly with any form of skill. And the other good part is, I was, I was still pressing up there and the ship just decided to stop moving. <laughs> like it just decided, no, no, stop moving. And the fucking the so much the the recoil of hitting off the walls is ridiculous. Like you could like as a as a have been already in some places, just keep getting perpetually bounced around the walls. Um that you're not just not even able to remove until it just stops, which it could be like two minutes later. At that point you're halfway down the pipe. Like everything about this was awful. Everything. There was no redeeming quality to this part at all. And I haven't even got, got, part, got to the fucking final part yet when you're in a dogfight and having to bomb New York. Yeah, you've to bomb the four targets that um, you've identified over the course of the last four days as yes. being the orbs. Um, base of operations. Basically, yeah. bases of operations, if feeding stations, and also the chases. That was a bad one. Oh my god, no idea. <laughs> So the one thing about that as well, you were saying that okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to bomb these four areas. But the thing is, you have to remember where they are on the map from all the tracking. So if you remember, props to you. But if you're like me and they're going like, where is the Statue of Liberty? Where is the Empire State Building? Oh, they're the two tiniest dots on the map. You're gonna be there a while, whilst also being chased down by the fucking maniac, who just happens to be far better at piloting the ship than you are. Okay, I think I lined. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much lined up here, so I'm able to go straight up. Well, almost. And a minor just into the right doesn't work. <laughs> oh my god, this is awful. I genuinely think I had a beer after this game. Just to relieve the stress. Um, and uh, yeah, we come out from the uh, toilets and set in uh, Prospect Park. We flew, we swam back up the pipe, lads. What a great story for us. Meanwhile, <laughs> there's a, uh, there's Phil. He's looking really stoked about this. Oh boy. And he just have, happened to have an orb somewhere in town at an indeterminate location because that's harder to draw. Look at this triumphant music for the villain getting his own spaceship. I was gonna say this is the villain who's going up into space. <laughs> I cho I choose to believe he just like switch on the radio and that was that's what was on. And now for some more human music.
think it's trying to tell us something. <laughs> Stop playing the game. So now we're into uh, bombing mode. So here's a little orb. And we're now going to bomb uh, Belleville Hospital, Grand Central Station, the Empire State Building, and uh, and the Statue of Liberty. So, yeah. Obviously, you're supposed to remember where they are on the map. And if you get one wrong, it's pretty much game over. But you won't know yeah, until you've run out of bombs. Yeah, the same. Yeah. You won't know until you've uh, run out of bombs, and then Phil just basically hunts you down and kills you. There he is there, ready to go. That was me bouncing off yeah. um, the boundary of New York, because there is a boundary. Yeah, it's walled off, the whole thing. Yeah. That was me guessing what the Empire State Building was. That was the wrong answer, which means I've already lost. <laughs> oh yeah, because it shows you when you get it right, doesn't it? Yeah, it gives you an image of, uh, of the building destroyed. So basically this fucking last level turns into Al-Qaeda Simulator 2002. Oh, by the way, because I press enter, it automatically dropped a bomb on me. Yeah. The fact that even if you save the game, something fucks up just says so much about the game. Okay, so I start being tactical here. I think, okay, maybe if I hit the Empire State Building, I can like, kite him around the area. But good luck trying to find it. Did you miss there? Did you get that right? No, you got it wrong. That's apparently not where the Empire State, or State of Statue of Liberty is. Not according to this fucking game, anyway. I was on Ellis Island or some shit like that. So, so did I, Neil. So did I. I am genuinely fighting with the controls here, by the way. <laughs> like, I literally, there's a section there where I was just pressing right and it's going down as well. And like, just like, it seems, I... it seems Phil has, uh, is having similar, oh, there you go, all right. Yeah. It seems Phil's having similar um, control issues because he's just totally unable to get. Well, it seems that way, Neil, but, um, but. It didn't feel like it at the time, where I am just genuinely trying to like, look, just go up, just travel fucking up, and that happens, <laughs> and you get this face. Jesus. Now that if that's not a thumbnail for this video, for this whole playthrough, I don't know what is. Imagine having to draw that. Imagine putting your name to something. So there's a uh, there hospital down. I know you're down. <laughs> Hooray! Um, because my ship outright refused to move up. I refuse to take any responsibility for this final level. It is just absolutely terrible. <laughs> like, I am not... Like, I don't care, right? You can call me... I don't know if there's any way to prove my innocence here outside of playing it. But holy shit. Like, having a, a section this poorly controlled just legitimately upsets me. So at this point, I figure out where everything is, which is nice. Um, turns out the Statue of Liberty has been pushed out to sea because it's on the edge of the map. That little purple dot there is a Statue of Liberty. <laughs> She's looking well. Uh, fair to say. But again, the one thing that's eluded me, eluded me throughout all this is the Empire State Building. Because like there are such larger like buildings on the map. You're thinking, oh, must be one of them. All the like multicolored buildings. But it's just hiding in plain sight for the entire time. Um, 
and this is me trying to move up and it's actually going left when I'm telling it not to go left this is me trying to hit the fucking Grand Central Station and Phil's constantly on my ass I bounce off Manhattan because apparently Rhode Island is fucked fairness like he could be he could have been a much bigger dick mm -hmm. in this section than he this is true like it's kind of it's kind of simulated somewhat because when you do run out of bombs he automatically hones in on you oh yeah by the way case in point oh yeah because yeah i saved so therefore it launches my last bomb on me thanks lads So was that Empire State Building? No, it was not. Uh, was you getting? That was me getting smacked by Phil. Again, I just can't get over the fact that the big bad guy of this game is called Phil Cook. Just what a <laughs> boring fucking name for a villain. Like that, that's like a Bond villain that's called Barry. You know, like. Fuck me. Oh, yeah. If you, if you feck your last bomb, he suddenly gets a lot quicker and yeah, he just, just kills you. Immediately hones in, yeah. That's also the cheek as well, that you only have four bombs to work with. Like, this, you have no room for error whatsoever. You just have to nail them every single one. You have to know where you're going. And you get that fucking face. Yeah. Don't worry, this will all be over soon. <laughs> is what I kept telling myself during the gameplay. So yeah, it's this white dot here that I just breezed over. Because apparently it's fucking Gale Force winds out. Never mind. Bonk. More fill face. <laughs> I, just, I just thought I'd stay in that for a while. Just... Just so I can... I'm just a uh, thumbnail fishing here, lads. Don't mind me. <laughs> Honestly, that's so bad. So I believe it's at this point where I just said, fuck it, where is, where is the Empire State Building in New York? Obviously, the map is not accurate to uh, where it is in real life, but it's a game, so let's just let it, let it work away. Honestly. And here we go. Here's the, here's the end of the game, lads. So all the suffering, all the pain and humiliation I've suffered over the last two and a half hours. Well, actually, in real time, it was more or less three and a half hours. This is all I was leading up to. This one bomb on the Empire State Building. Or maybe not. Yes, we all knew that Phil was trouble. I don't, I don't think Phil was a trouble here. The, is the fact that you programmed such a horribly, like, <laughs> controlling vehicle section. Like, Mass Effect is looking at this and going, thank fuck someone was worse than us. So, yeah, I'm getting Night. warmer. I'm getting warmer here. Um... <laughs> Purely by the fact it was so, like, off. Nope. I like I said, the worst part about this is that, like, because the controls are so inconsistent, you start double-guessing yourself with your aiming. So you don't know whether, like, to do, like, a passing shot or just hover over it and then drop the bomb. But you can't really hover over because Phil is going to like just attack you straight away. So, I finally get there and here's the end of the game, lads. Phil is livid. Because we just destroyed his home as well. <laughs> and there we have it. Manhunter New York is done, thank Christ. 
this is what we earn for all that hard work. This scene. And in case anybody is wondering why we don't end the game by killing Phil himself. Mm. Yeah, precisely. Yep. Look, we've started a revolution. Yes, all the other Manhunters and Rebels are here. Yes. Despite the fact that we contacted any of them and they have no idea who we are and no <laughs> idea that we're working with them. You're wearing one of our robes, therefore you're my friend. I'm just happy to be here. Oh, oh here comes Phil. Uh, <laughs> Phil vaporizes everyone bar us. <laughs> and we, not even missing a beat, we just go, right, fuck this. Off I go to my next adventure. Your yes. <laughs> and away we go to the sequel, Manhunter San Francisco. Which literally does continue straight after. Yeah, it's really just smack bang right after it. But there you have it. That was Manhunter. Um, That was so terrible. Okay, I genuinely not joking here. That is the worst game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> I can't even be funny about it anymore. Like that just was torture from start to finish. There was like ten minutes of clarity to start where the premise was neat, some things were good, and then I had to fucking do the same maze twice. So Neil, apart from that, um, did you enjoy the latest edition of Sierra Quest, or uh, did you enjoy at least drinking your way through it? Well, yeah, I enjoyed the drinking. <laughs> I think we all we all enjoyed drinking, just generally. Um, hopefully, this is the last uh, Sierra Quest before um, our quarantine is lifted, which means that uh, the next Sierra Quest we play will hopefully be in the same room, if not at least social distancing. <laughs> um. So if that's the case then, Neil, the next game we'll be playing will be Police Quest 2. <laughs> yes. Um, hopefully it's not as pedantic as the first game because, Jesus Christ, that was really bad. Um, no, I, I think they maintained the pedantry in the oh, second one. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Because I suppose that, that was the selling point of the game, really, wasn't it? That was like a... It's, really, and it's an accurate police simulator, so they had to keep it up. Uh, so... In any case, um, thank you for watching Manhunter New York. Um, sorry, just just generally really, really sorry for that. Um, but it was next on our list, so we had to do it. Um, maybe go watch some of our other Sierra quests to cleanse your palate, maybe. you know. We promised they're all a lot better than this one. Yeah, well, at least in some degrees, um, <laughs> they're better. Uh, but with that being said, uh, if you have managed to get to the end of this, well done. Um, we'll see you for the next one, which will be Police Quest 2. Until then, chaps, uh, we'll see you later. Take care.